was that performance art? Because that was really good. I believed him there for a while. Wrap your arms around this. A state in financial collapse is able to find funding for a group that is outwardly advocating the destruction of the government of the United States. <laughs> oh my goodness. I wish the world made sense. How on God's green earth does this stuff happen? I, I, I wouldn't think about that one too long. By the way, the New York State Council on the Arts was able to fund these crazy people because they had funded much of the mainstream arts through large grants from the stimulus package. Oh, the stimulus package. Now, stimulus money that we can see so far doesn't appear to have gone directly to the Breck Forum. Oh, but it's too bad we have three million viewers every single night who now don't have a job and have nothing to do. Oh, if they only had high-speed broadband for free as a guaranteed right, they could hop on the internet and track down how much might have gone from the stimulus package. But here's what we do know. Stimulus money went to, what is it, SCA, right? And that, this organization, gave money to the Brecht organization. Isn't that great? So, don't worry. I mean, your money, this is separate money. They keep them in separate piles. This is the people that are advocating for the destruction of the United States. These are the people who are advocating for the arts. I, I, different serial numbers on the cash that came from the government to, to these people, I'm, I'm sure. By the way, you know what also is really weird? The Apollo Alliance, the National, they wrote the stimulus bill, okay? They're the ones that did the stimulus package. The Apollo Alliance in New York has Jeff Jones from the Weather Underground, another guy who says, hey, I'd like to blow up the United States of America. He is advising New York from the Apollo Alliance how to spend their stimulus money. I wonder if any of our poor viewers that don't have any high-speed internet for free or food or guaranteed housing might have the time to see if there's any connection here between because wouldn't that be weird look everybody has a different idea of what art is believe it or not I was named the 100th most powerful man in the art world by Art Review Magazine. I like to say that because it drives them crazy that I point it out. I get it. And maybe most artists wouldn't want me making decisions on, you know, how to sustain a, quote, vital ecosystem of individual artists and cultural organization that support the creation, presentation, critical review, and the distribution of the arts and culture. But can we not all come together to re realize and recognize one thing? that in the middle of a financial crisis or outside of a financial crisis it's a bad idea to give tax dollars to people who say I want to destroy the system that's giving me tax dollars or is that too complex for the people in Albany We have to help bring this government down. We have to help destroy this system. And that requires increasing the alienation that working class and oppressed people feel. The way change is going to happen in this country is through the destruction of what we call the United States of America. Yeah, okay, I think I had no funding for you guys. Remember, artists, if these guys win, there will be no government left to fund you. But you guys just keep looking for the source of these Yankee tickets at the New York Times, will you? You got to get to the bottom of that one. That one's important. Next week, I'm going to be on Broadway. No stimulus dollars will be involved. Not a dime. I could apply. They won't give it to me. Oh, they'll give it to the communists who want to bring down the destruction of the country. No, no, not me. No. And you know what? I wouldn't ask for any money. I'm going to put this one on myself, and I'm going to invite you to come. And in exchange for my efforts, I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind buying a ticket. That's the way it works in America. It's Broadway, you know. So I'm going to be at the Nokia Theater in New York City, Times Square, our Insider Extreme launch party. It is the history, oh no, sorry, is the future of history is what I'm calling it. 
You don't want to miss this. Be there, live and in person. Radio, television, the internet, the communication uh, invention and revolution that has allowed Americans to experience and share that one experience. I'm going to take a multimedia look at America and New York and its history. We have always been, we the people, leading our progress, not from Washington. Common sense was and is the best solution to any problem. Now, Insider Extreme will give you unprecedented access to my exclusive programming and access to the greatest minds. For tickets, it's next, was it next Tuesday? Next week in New York on Broadway, one night only, not a stimulus dollar. Now, how much would you pay? And I also give you this stick, too. No, I don't. Go to glennbeck.com. Detroit Public Schools are working with Walmart to offer a class that teaches job readiness. Over 11 weeks, students are going to learn how to apply for entry-level positions in exchange for school credit. The principal of one of the high schools says this program is an opportunity for students, you know, getting some job training. And it will teach students to be responsible and learn a practical life skill. I think this sounds great. No, no, no. You're in... What are you living in, fantasy land? The activist group, BAM, is objecting to this program. One of the group's coordinators recently said, quote, they're going to train students to be subservient workers. This is not why parents send them to school to learn how to work for Walmart. Really? Subservient workers? Walmart, by the way, isn't the only company participating in this program. You might recognize some of these names. McDonald's, uh, Marriott, AutoZone, University of Phoenix, you know. Riffraff. If this is subservient work, then uh, why don't you tell that to uh, this guy? Uh, this guy. Yeah. He's the CEO of McDonald's, Jim Skinner. He got his first job working at McDonald's. He now runs it. Uh, and then, of course, there's this guy. He started working when he was in a restaurant when he was 12. Or uh, this guy. Chris Gardner, Pursuit of Happiness. Watch that movie. You know anything you know about uh, sleeping in a train station at night? He does. Watch that movie. When did any job become beneath any of us? Nearly 15 million people in this country are out of work. Detroit has been particularly hard hit. When I was a kid, Grandpa used to have to uh, eat large sandwiches. And I, as a kid, used to wear bread bag boots. It builds character. There's nothing wrong with it. Get the job done. End of story. Tomorrow's a show the DNC is going to watch, and the White House, and everybody in Congress, I think, because, uh oh, we've got an hour long sit down with a member of Congress who says the Democrats are playing a different game, and he's a Democrat. You don't want to miss it. Tomorrow from New York, good night, America. <laughs>